Vientiane is the quaint, quiet capital of Laos. It is often an entry point for many travelers on their way to explore the depths of this landlocked Southeast Asian country. Although the urban landscape lacks the natural beauty and adrenaline rushing activities of the rest of Laos, the city is full of hidden historic gems and iconic landmarks of the country, reflecting the nation's vibrant history. This is where my Lao journey began, and here's how it went. Good afternoon, guys, and welcome to my 125th country, Lao. I am super excited to show you guys around Laos. We'll be discovering this place together because it's my first time here. And after doing a lot of big cities like Bangkok and Kuala Lumpur and Singapore, I'm excited to be in a small little country and we're gonna be doing a lot of cool nature activities, heading up north to the mountains. And yeah, I'm just really excited to discover the beautiful nation of Laos. Anyways, I just arrived in the capital city, Vientiane, Kind of in the center southern part of Laos. We're right on the Mekong River and right on the other side of the Mekong River we have Thailand and this is one of the most laid-back chilled out capital cities in Southeast Asia. There's only about a million people so it's super nice to be in a very quaint quiet place for a couple days and a lot of backpackers and a lot of travelers too say there's not so much going on in Vientiane but heading up to like Luang Prabang and Bang Vien will be some of like the more cool places to go. But since I was flying into Vientiane anyways, I wanted to give it a couple days and just see some of the sites. So it's already kind of late in the afternoon. We're just gonna check out a few sites here. And then tomorrow we'll check out a lot more of the historic center, some of the temples. But this afternoon, I wanted to come to the northeast. It's almost two miles out of the historic center is the Thot Luang Temple, which is this golden, pagoda-like temple behind me. It's one of the most iconic pieces of architecture in Laos and the temple was built when Vientiane became the capital city of Laos and it is said that one of Buddha's bones is buried within the temple grounds here. So I'm excited to go check it out. It's just this beautiful gold inspired temple. So let's head in and see what this thing looks like up close. just paid 30,000 kip, which is about $1.50, and I've entered the Thot Luong Temple complex here. And right around the base of this golden temple, you have this big grassy courtyard, and then around the edge of the courtyard, you have all of these hallways. And around some of the hallways, you have some old statues of Buddha found from different eras of Lao history here. And then you can walk around the edge, and then on each side there's a little altar that takes you up to the base of the golden temple but you can't go any further than these altars but you can walk around the base here and you just get beautiful views looking up at this bright golden temple and again in 1566 when the capital was changed from Luang Prabang to Vientiane this temple was built to commemorate that moment so very respected site here and yeah very beautiful again it's about two miles outside of the city of Vientiane, so a bit of a ways, but a very iconic piece of architecture to see here. So let's just kind of keep wandering around the base of the temple here, and then we'll see what else Vientiane has. That was the Thot Luang Temple here. Very just interesting first glimpse for me of Lao and some of the heritage here. And then around this temple, it looks like there's a lot of these other kind of more modern Buddhist temples here. And I hear some chanting over in this one. So let's see if we head over there and check out what's going on over in one of these side temples.
was super interesting, just such an authentic look into a little bit of the Buddhist culture here. And you're just in this side temple right next to the Golden Temple that we just came from, but there's almost no tourists here. And there were just a bunch of Buddhist monks conducting a ceremony, but the temple itself, just I'd never seen a Buddhist temple painted like that. It was just so beautiful, so vibrant, and just had the story of Buddha all over the walls and just beautiful, beautiful drawings and architecture there. So. Anyways, we're gonna try to see one more thing this afternoon. We're gonna head back towards the center of Vientiane and there's a big archway monument called the Patu Sai, which is another one of the icons of Vientiane. So it's about a mile, mile and a half from here still. So we're gonna start heading that way to catch that area for sunset. So yeah, let's uh, start heading back towards Vientiane. I've just walked back towards the city of Vientiane a little bit and we're still actually almost a mile outside of the historic center here but we've made it to Patusai Park and it's this big open park you have some fountains it's this big traffic roundabout but right at the edge of the park here we have the Patusai Monument which is the victory gate and Lao was occupied by the French from about 1893 to about 1953 and so when they got their independence in 1953, a few years later in 57, 58, they built this monument and it's an arch and it's kind of modeled after the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. So it has that kind of shape to it and that was the inspiration for it. But you have just some more of a Lao design to it. So all along the edge, you have some different Buddhist symbols and just some really cool sculptures and architecture and it's another one of the main landmarks here in Vientiane. You'll often see it as like a landscape image when you're searching for Vientiane. So anyways, yeah, let's uh, wander around the park a little bit here, check out this monument, and then I think you can go up to the top just to get some views of the city. So yeah, let's uh, check it out. So I've just paid 30,000 kip or about a dollar fifty and you're actually able to come up to the top of this monument here and you're able to get some views overlooking the city. There's nothing like crazy dramatic. You can just kind of see the roundabout that circles this whole monument. You can see some of these slightly higher like apartment buildings. There's a couple more ornate buildings here. You can look down on the fountain and as you're coming up there's a couple of different museums as you're coming up the different levels. It shows you a little bit of the building process of this monument. Yeah and then as you're up here just get a little bit more of a closer look at some of the ornate architecture of some of the spires of this big arch in the middle of the Vientiane. go up to the top there again it's not like the best views but you had a little bit of a museum as you were going up and I guess they still have a lot of work that they want to do on this archway even some of these walls they want to make those a little bit more ornate make the interior more ornate and just have a lot more sculptures and floral designs all around this arch just making it even that much more beautiful but again the inside of the arch was just I was amazed at how beautiful the ceiling of that was so 
Yeah, anyway, so that's the Patusai Monument here, kind of one of the central landmarks. Again, we're still a ways from the old historic town. So tomorrow I'm gonna to show you a little bit more of, what, of some of the temples and some of the museums that are in the historic town. And then there's another Buddha park that has some old Lao statues that's even further out of town. So I'll have to take a bus or taxi tomorrow to show you guys that. But I'm just going to hang out here at the Patusai Monument for a little bit for sunset. Just enjoy the beautiful light, enjoy this monument. But that's it for just the first afternoon introduction to Lao and Vientiane here. Tomorrow we'll explore a little bit more of the city. So I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Good morning guys and welcome back to Vien Tien. Yesterday we explored Thot Luong and the Patu Sai, which are just a little ways out of the historic center. But this morning I wanted to just walk around the historic center a little bit with you guys and show you there's just a really high density of really cool temples, some really cool more like heritage sites. And the downtown part of Vien Tien is just these quiet little streets. There's actually lots of really cool little cafes and restaurants you can go to. And we just have these nice tree-lined streets. And yeah, it's just a very pleasant, easy place to walk around. So this morning I figured we'd just walk around, do a little bit of temple hopping. I know there's a museum that we can check out. And so yeah, let's just, right down the main street is where most of the temples will be. And the main street is the Seta Thila. So let's just start by wandering down the street and checking out a few of the little temples. westernmost part of the historic center here. I've just entered Wat Impeng and again there's going to be lots of little temples all throughout the downtown historic center here and one thing that's worth noting is that in 1827 we had the Siamese invasion here which destroyed a lot of the city and a lot of these temples were burnt down and destroyed so what we're seeing are these 16th century temples that were destroyed but then had a lot of renovations to them and also a lot of these temples and monasteries that we're going to be visiting here in the downtown part of Vien Tien are actually active monasteries so you have resident monks living around here and this one I know and a few of the ones downtown will just be kind of free to enter roam around check out some of the architecture here so let's just start with Impeng here I'll show you guys a little bit of the architecture some of the beautiful painting and artwork that surround these temple complexes and a little bit of the courtyard here. So let's check it out. That is a brief look at the Wat Impeng Temple. You can't go in or anything, but you can kind of go up to the porch there and there's just some beautiful paintings. The outside just has this beautiful facade. And then again, there's this little courtyard with some other altars. And so literally like right next door, there's Wat Ong Tu, which is another temple monastery. So let's head across the street and check that one out. I have just come across the street to Ang Tu Monastery here and as you're entering there are these giant white elephants and one of the names of Laos is the land of one million elephants. So you just have that national symbol outside these monasteries. So we've just entered here and it looks like you can actually go in this monastery. So let's head in and check it out.
honestly a little underwhelming. Again, I just came from Bangkok and they're like massive, huge Buddha statues. But very cool to see the inside of a temple here. And again, just feels a little bit more authentic, you know, just seeing a little bit more of these monasteries. And again, all throughout the old part of the NTN, there's just tons of temples. You could temple hop all day. But uh, next, I want to keep heading towards the center of town. And one of the oldest temples here has been turned into a museum, the Hofra Kyo, and that has limited hours. So let's head to the center of town, check out the museum, and I think there's some cool old artifacts from all over Laos. And again, it was a temple itself too, so you'll get some of that temple architecture. So let's walk through the quaint little town here and head to the museum. Just taken a quick little detour from the museum just a couple blocks off of the main road there and I've come to the Black Stupa which is on this very quiet neighborhood roundabout but you have this very historic 16th century stupa so it was one of the original buildings here in the town of Vientiane and I mean there's not really too much to see here but just very interesting so anyways, we're just a couple blocks from the museum, so let's keep walking and we'll be there soon. I've just made it to the Hofra Kyo Museum here, and this was one of the original temples built by the king himself in 1565 when Vientiane became the capital. And for about two or three hundred years it actually housed the Emerald Buddha, which is a very sacred relic, which is actually now held in Bangkok. I actually saw it just a couple days ago, but it was stolen during the Siamese invasion in the early 1800s and taken from this temple to Thailand. And so, kind of interesting to see that history a little bit of the flip-flop of some of these relics. But anyways, this has since become a museum, so it houses a bunch of other very sacred relics, and it costs 30,000 kip or $1.50. So let's head in and check out this really historic temple turned into a museum here. Kyo Museum here and unfortunately when you go inside you can't take any photos and videos but it has this huge collection of a lot of different artifacts found here and all throughout Laos and right at the front there's a big Buddha statue and even though this has been turned into a museum since the 1970s it still felt like a bit of a shrine people are going in and doing prayers and meditations there but all throughout you just have like a lot of different little artifacts so really interesting to see again I couldn't show you but then around the outside you have this porch that wraps around that has these beautiful red gold facades and then even around out here you have some old Buddha artifacts and different stones with inscriptions around here so it's worth just walking around the outside here checking out some of these old statues and sculptures from Laos so Anyways, right across the street from here, there's another temple that actually survived the Siamese invasion in 1828. So we're going to head out here, go across the street, and check out that old intact temple. I've just come across the street to Wat Si Saket, which was built in 1818. So it was it's not as old as some of the other temples that were built in the 1500s, 16th century here. 
but because it was built in 1818 in a little bit more of a modern Buddhist architecture and style, it wasn't destroyed during the Siam invasion 1828. So ironically, it's the oldest standing temple because all of the other 16th century temples have had to thus been renovated since that invasion. So anyways, I've just come in here. There's this big courtyard that has thousands and thousands of these Buddha statues and it has all of these little cutouts in the wall of these tiny little Buddha statues. And then there's the temple in the middle here. So let's walk around the courtyard check out some of these really cool old Buddha statues of all different sizes and then see if we can head into the temple in the inside. This outside courtyard area has just been amazing. You just have lines and lines of these Buddhas surrounding the entire courtyard. And then in these little alcoves here, you just have these little mini Buddha statues. And there's literally thousands of them all around. And then even in this corner here, most of the paint is just kind of washed away. But here you just have this bright blue and coral painting that surrounds the alcoves that gives you an idea of what maybe it used to look like all around here when it was painted. So I think I'm gonna head into the temple now. It looks like they're not gonna let you do photo or video in there again, so I won't be able to show you that. But honestly, just walking around the outside here has just been really beautiful. Saket and just beautiful temple. One of my favorite views of Vientiane so far with just all of those cloisters with all of the little Buddha statues and you have these worn old golden Buddha statues all around the side there and then you go inside and again unfortunately we can't take any photos or videos but you just have this massive Buddha and you have more of just these cloisters of little Buddhas just surrounding all of the walls. You have a very intricate beautiful detailed painting all around the outside of the walls and it's just absolutely gorgeous to just be in there and again it's just the oldest preserved temple here in Vientiane so very beautiful so anyways guys that's about it for the old town of Vientiane of course there's a lot more you can kind of see and do there's lots of really cool cafes that you can check out and just the streets are just these tree-lined streets just very beautiful quaint little place to walk around but those are some of the main temples and attractions that you'll see here in Vientiane and there's just one more thing in this capital region that I want to show you. It's a little far. It's almost like an hour bus ride out of town, but it's the Buddha Park. So I'm going to try to catch bus number 14 from the central bus station, and we're going to take a little bus ride out to Buddha Park and just see some of these old Buddha statues just outside of the capital city here. It was a bit of a journey. It's almost an hour outside of Vientiane, but I was able to get the bus for less than a dollar and I've made it out to the Buddha Park. And this is a little park that has a bunch of these statues. And this park was like established in 1958. And so you have a lot of this mix of Buddhism and Hindu folklore and statues throughout these nice gardens here. And you're right along the Mekong River. So you see Thailand just on the other side. So. Yeah, let's just wander around and explore some of these old stone looking statues in the Buddha Park here.
very interesting place to walk around. You just have tons and tons of these statues, nice gardens, nice flowers. But one of the main features here is the reclining Buddha that's about 130 feet long. So quite a long kind of centerpiece here. And then you have all of these other little statues. And then another notable feature that we'll check out in a little bit is there's this giant, they call it a pumpkin, and you can actually go up to the top of that pumpkin and get some views. So let's kind of wander around the garden a little bit and then we'll eventually take you to the pumpkin and get up above the garden park here and be able to get some more elevated views of some of these statues. I've explored most of the gardens. Let's go up and see the gardens from the top of this three-story pumpkin. strangest sculpture to come through. It felt like something out of Alice in Wonderland crawling through the rabbit hole. You're just like ducking and crawling and there's these like tiny little narrow staircases and then there's like three or four stories of just really weird sculptures in these rooms and then you just kind of come through this tiny little hole up here and you're up on the roof of this pumpkin and you just get these really cool views looking over the statue park you can see the resting buddha you can see a bunch of these different sculptures and the gardens just all surrounding and then you have this really strange spire on the top here so very cool way to just get like a nice over view of the Buddha Park here. So I think I'm going to keep wandering through the park a little bit and then all the way to the other side I think you can get to the Mekong River and get a glimpse of Thailand off over the river there. Very interesting just checking out this little Buddha park. It's very chill, very relaxed here, and just these massive statues. And again, you get some of the Buddha lore and Hindu lore kind of mixed there. And that's about it for the park. A very cool place to come. Again, it's a ways out of Vientiane, so you can easily get a tuk-tuk here or a bus, but you just have to allow yourself at least an hour each way, and then probably half an hour to an hour just exploring this place. And now I've come all the way to the edge of the park here, and there's these nice little picnic benches and nice little farmland that you're overlooking the Mekong River. And there's a little restaurant and cafe here, so nice place to just kind of relax and chill. And I think that's about it for Vientiane. And again, a lot of people wouldn't bother coming to Vientiane too much, and I see why. It's not like the most exciting place, but some of the temples I saw and some of these cool extra little features are, were just really cool to see and to witness and just got me so excited about seeing the rest of the country here. And of course, I'm sure there's so much more you could do in Vientiane. I know there are a lot more temples. There's a night market you can go to and just a couple other little things that you could see if you had some extra days and time to explore here. But I'm most excited to head up into the highlands of Laos and tomorrow I'm going up to Vang Vieng and then I'll go up to Luang Prabang, which is the old capital of Laos. So there's a lot of really cool stuff to see up north here. But so that was about it. Hope you guys enjoyed exploring Vientiane with me and I'll see you guys when we explore the rest of Laos. <laughs>